Hi everyone, AJ Brown here, and I've often been labeled the most disciplined options trader. Now, truth be told, I know behind my back a lot of folks call me the laziest options trader. I like to think of myself as the most efficient option trader. That's because I like to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. I also like to do it with the least amount of effort energy investment dollars and emotional swings up and down as possible so i'm not a day trader instead i like to use options to their fullest i like to use the option strategies and optimize them with option selection to take advantage of markets that go up that go down that go sideways to take advantage of people's fear which gets represented in options price through implied volatility moves up and down and also just by time passing by as options have a wasting asset component to them but with that said a lot of folks they can't even get their head wrapped around what an option is in fact a lot of people often think that options are something that just is traded like stocks. And so I thought I'd take a moment and review exactly what is an option. Now, a lot of you pay attention to my podcast, my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, my Instagram, and I really appreciate that. And you could do me a favor. If you like the content I post in these places, I'd really appreciate if you give all that content a big fat thumbs up, give it a like, subscribe to it, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow my Facebook page and my Instagram, and sign up for all the notifications. Click that notifications bell. That would help me greatly get this content in front of more eyes. And if, it, if you like it, then that would be an awesome way for you to reciprocate. With that said, what are these options? Well, you know that they're in an investment vehicle, but they're not shares of a stock issued by a company as piece of ownership. Rather, they're called derivatives. That means investors like you and me, we create them. See, they're this legal agreement between a buyer and a seller, and they define what that buyer can do with some sort of underlying asset, like a stock or an exchange-traded fund or an index. They define whether that buyer of this agreement can buy an underlying asset or sell an underlying asset, and it defines it at what price that can be done. We call that the strike price and for how long this agreement lasts until the option agreement expires. We call that the expiration date. And you have to understand that this agreement gives the buyer of the agreement all of these rights, and it obligates the seller of the agreement to fulfill these rights, and that seller gets put under that obligation because the buyer is paying them some money for this agreement. So you might say, okay, how much money does one of these agreements cost? What are those option agreements priced at? Well, these prices for these agreements are derived from whatever the current value of the underlying asset is, the stock, the ETF, the exchange traded fund, whether the agreement is allowing the buyer to buy an underlying asset or sell the underlying asset, that's the type of agreement. We call that a call or a put. In other words, are you going to call from the seller the underlying asset or are you going to put to the seller an underlying asset? And what is the price that this transaction is going to take place at? That's going to help determine what the option agreement price is. Also, how long before that agreement expires? What's the expiration date? And finally, there's going to be other agreements just like this one. What is the supply and demand for these agreements? Because that's also going to kind of determine the price because 
these agreements, as you might understand, are a way for people to hedge their bets, right? If you use one of these agreements simultaneously with owning a stock or shorting a stock or an index or an ETF, you can basically use it as a form of insurance policy. And so if there's a lot of want for insurance policies like that, meaning the demand is high, the price for these agreements will go up. However, if there's not so much, if things are going pretty cool and people don't think they need to insure their underlying asset purchase or shorting, then the supply of them will be up and the price will go down. So those little criterion are, or the criteria plural, is what determines what these things are priced at. And you might say, well, how can we have similar agreements like this all floating around? It's because these option agreements, they're standardized. What does that mean? That means, you know, it's an agreement, but the legal details have been negotiated and settled upon. You know, the custom agreements, you usually need a lawyer's help. And that's often time consuming. You got to pay those lawyers. So it's expensive. So we use uniquely negotiated custom option agreements when the underlying asset is something big, like a real estate deal. Like if you're doing an option on a piece of real estate or an option on owning a business. But when we're talking about these commonly traded agreements that we actually trade out on the open exchanges made especially for these agreements where the underlying asset is a stock, an ETF, an index, we use standardized agreements. That's where the agreements where the buyers and sellers, they've agreed upon this boilerplate legal terms and there's just four components of the agreements that are customized or changed, kind of fill in the blanks and that is what is the underlying asset? What is the type of agreement? Is it for buying or selling the underlying asset? Is it a call or put? What is the price set for buying or selling that underlying asset, the strike price, and how long before that agreement expires? You fill in the blanks into this boilerplate term and now you've got an agreement you can go sell. And so if those four blanks match agreements that other people have agreed to, now you can standardize and buy and sell those things. In fact, that's an important thought as well, because once you've created this agreement, once the seller's under an obligation and the buyer has the right by the buyer having this agreement, the buyer can then go and buy and sell the agreements themselves. In other words, once an option agreement exists, it's been created, they can be bought and sold. In fact, whatever the current value of the option agreement is, it may go up or down again, depending on the value of the underlying asset, the stock, the ETF, the index, depending on if there's now all of a sudden a bigger supply of these agreements or more of a demand. And also there's going to be a change in price depending on how close that agreement, that option is to expiring. This original buyer of the agreement, they may decide to sell their right to someone else. And the original seller may decide that they want to buy back this right and release themselves from any obligations they're on. In fact, like we said, there's a whole exchange for buying and selling these standardized option agreements. In fact, option agreements can be bought and sold tens, if not hundreds or more times before they expire. So that gives you kind of a brief understanding of what these agreements are. And if you're in the European market, you know, these agreements can only be exercised by whoever owns it at expiration date. But if you're in the American markets, if you're using American options, they can be exercised at any time between now and the expiration date. So that's important to know as well. Hey, that's my review on what an option actually is. If you've really dug today's content that I created for you, whether you're listening to it in a podcast or watching it on a YouTube video or a Facebook video or an Instagram situation, then I'd like you to go ahead and give it a big fat like. You know, click on the like button and do me a favor. Subscribe to my podcast. Go over to my YouTube channel. Subscribe there. Go ahead and like my Facebook page. Follow it. And please... 
go ahead and take care and like this on Instagram. And wherever you can, the podcast, YouTube, all of them, sign up for notifications so that you know exactly when we're producing more content. And if you do those three things, like the content, subscribe to it on the various platforms, and sign up for the notifications, that's going to help me and thank me a lot and reciprocate to me for giving you good content. It'll make me be able to get my content in front of more eyes. So I really appreciate you doing that. Like it across the board. Subscribe. Sign up for notifications. Thank you for your time.